how to get them to like you back. What do you think about hooking up with your ex-partner after the breakup? This is a loaded question. Get off. Last time you had sex. Okay, can we talk? Can we talk? Well, get ready, because we're about to spill. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mr. Prada, but you can just call me Daniel because I'm already your best friend next door. You guys, we are starting a new series on this channel called Can We Talk? A weekly talk show and potential future podcast where I talk. We talk together. I'll answer questions, give advice. I've lived many different lives. I've been homeless. I've been in multiple long-term relationships. I've been in college. I've been a shoplifter. I have lived on my own since I was 17 years old. I have a lot of knowledge. And I always have an opinion and advice on something. I want you guys to live your best life learning from my mistakes. So grab a snack, grab a drink. I have my little latte here. How cute is this cup? And let's get into the questions. Okay, all of these questions were sent in anonymously. So if you guys are interested, I actually pulled from Instagram and here from YouTube. So just drop a comment down below and maybe I will choose your question for next week's episode. Why did you really delete your Twitter? What's the real tea? Well, you guys, the real tea is honestly, I was just over it. I have been on Twitter Oh my gosh, this is crazy, for 15 years. So kind of like Facebook, I grew up on it. I don't use Facebook anymore. And Twitter was just a place where my words and what I wanted to say wasn't really going out to my audience. It was going out to everybody else. And it was just, I don't know, I think since Elon came around, it was just, it was not the vibe anymore for me. And it was just another social media. Like I still have Snapchat. I have threads, which I started, which was kind of cool, but I haven't used since I opened it. I have TikTok, I have Instagram, I have YouTube. It's just too much to keep up with. And I don't know, I wasn't really interacting with you guys. I was interacting with a bunch of random ass people who don't even follow me and don't care about me. And I don't know, it was just not the vibe anymore. So I decided to deactivate it and delete my account. I'm in the place in life where if I'm not enjoying something, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna connect with it. And also I'm in the place in my life where I don't need to have an opinion on every single thing going on because that's kind of used to be my approach. You know, I, I was never somebody who was very outspoken in high school, at least not in the beginning. So I think when I got to college and I started finding my voice and I started getting more confidence, I would speak up for things that I, that I didn't like or that weren't correct or, you know, sometimes things that had nothing to do with me. And I think over the past two, three years, I've realized I'm like, not everything on the internet is for me. And I'd kind of prefer to be a little ignorant because it's just like too much information out there for me at once. And I don't need things on the outside determining how I feel about myself on the inside. So if something's not giving you peace and joy, and if you're not having fun, don't engage with it. Simple as that. If there was an ETN5, would you wanna come back as a producer? This is a very interesting question that this is being asked at this time. I don't know, part of me says yes, because I know that I, you know, if you guys aren't familiar, Escape the Night is a show that I produced for many years and the fans have always wanted a season five and who knows what's gonna happen in the future. But I think if I were asked, I would need the check to be strong you know I would need that producer executive producer role I'd need to be included creatively you know I built a lot of that escape the night brand you know I created the Instagram I was designing the merch I was helping build the IP and casting and you know X Y and Z and it was a lot of work so I'm not sure if it's the right fit who knows if there's an offer I'll have my team talk to your team about it. How do you deal slash feel about when friendships fall out or begin to drift away? Listen, it's natural that a lot of friendships will drift apart in life. That's just how we are. We grow, we move, we change. You know, we go different places. We want different things. We date people. Our focus is no longer on the friendship anymore and it's on other things. And we have different career aspirations and that's okay. You need to look at friendships, appreciate them for the moment because you don't know how long that they're gonna last. Some may be there for just a chapter. Some may be there for 10 years. Some may be there for a lifetime, but you don't really know. However, from my own experience, I can tell you that it is normal for friendships to change and drift apart and some may just end, but it's the ones that you can call up after three months of not speaking and you just pick up right where you left off. Those are the best friendships, period. And the ones that you don't need to always talk to every single day, you know? People are busy, we have different priorities, and it's okay to say, you know what, this friendship no longer serves me, I don't feel like we're connecting anymore, and it's okay to let those drift apart. Chasing a friendship that is 
one-sided, like say if you're putting in all the work, is just never gonna be conducive to a great relationship. So you either need to have the conversation or you're like, you know what? I think I'm gonna let this be. And that's my approach now. I used to be somebody who would always work and work and work and be the one who's putting in all the effort. And I'm like, hey, why isn't this person putting in any effort? So now I'm just like, you know what? It's okay, I'm gonna let this one go. And I've done that to quite a few people over the past couple years and it feels great because now I, I don't have the bandwidth to have a thousand friends. I can only handle like three to four max. Would you ever leave LA permanently? Um, I definitely would. I don't think I'm ever, I've ever been rooted in Los Angeles. I, you know, I was in a long-term relationship here. I work here, but I don't think I really ever settled and had like a normal, like a normal life here, you know? And it's only starting to happen now that I don't travel as much. However, yeah, I would definitely leave LA. I don't think I want to raise a family here. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of just like, I take each day as it's thrown at me. I used to be really, really against having like a schedule and a set life. Like I loved the change. I loved running around. And now as I get older, I'm like, oh, I kind of like want to stay in this weekend. I want to stay home. I want to work on the house. I want to go to this restaurant. Like I just started going to lunch with friends. I had never done that before in my life. Like, hey, Saturday, do you want to meet up and grab lunch? It's the most fabulous thing ever. So TBD. You never know. Tips for getting out of a depressive episode. Honey, I'm with you on that. I was on depression medication, you know, on and off throughout my life. I'm not on anything currently because it doesn't serve me. I don't need it right now. Some people need it all the time. Some people only need it to get you out of a rut and then you can go to therapy. But either way, this is not something to be ashamed of. It's natural, it's normal. There's so much going on in the world. We have so many pressures and, and society's wild. What I do personally, again, this is advice that I'm giving as somebody who's dealt with these issues. I'm not telling you what to do, but this is what works for me. So what works for me is making lists. I can be a very unorganized person when I'm depressed. I always try to keep my room clean. I always try to eat well because sometimes I forget to eat and I try to go outside and I try to get some physical exercise and exertion. So whether it's just a little walk at night or in the morning, try to go out in the sun, try to go by the water if there's a lake near you or a river or an ocean and just feel the energy, be alone, be one with you know, the vibes, that really helps me. And also of course, talking about it, but some people don't feel comfortable talking about it and that's okay too. Advice for people who have never been in a long-term relationship and are guarded. First of all, can we normalize not being in a long-term relationship or not ever being in a relationship, even into your late 20s, 30s, or 40s? It's life and sometimes you just don't meet that person and some people don't feel comfortable dating and need to do work on themselves. My advice is to keep it low key. Look at dating like you're going out to do something for yourself and you're just hanging out with a friend. So maybe if you don't feel comfortable going on like a date to dinner, maybe you're like, hey, would you want to get ice cream and go to the movies? Or would you want to go get tacos at the beach? Or would you wanna go for a walk in the park and I don't know, go go-karting or something like an activity. I really love an activity, especially for first time dates. I think you really get to know somebody. Go to a concert that maybe you guys both have been wanting to go to. Something that takes a little bit of pressure off of the situation and doesn't make it so serious. I think having fun on a date, you get to see more of a person and you get to be more of yourself than going on a typical like dinner date, which is kind of like old school, but those are nice as well. But yeah, just ingrained in your head that it's not that serious and you're gonna meet up with a friend and that's it. And let the chips fall where they may. I love how outgoing you are. What's your advice to just get out there and travel alone? So a lot of my friends, and I, I don't have very many in LA, like I said, like I have like three to four and I rarely see them, especially in this moment in my life, like this month, I'm kind of devoting to myself, healing, growth, eating well, working out, being active and working on my house. I'm kind of just doing me right now. It's like an emotional and mental and physical reset and a recharge. I call it a vibrational reset, if you will. But my advice is to just do it. Like traveling alone is not scary. Road trips are so much fun. Download audiobooks, music. I like to map out where I'm going before and look up restaurants, look up cute little roadside attractions. You know, of course you wanna take the safe precautions and stay places that you feel safe. If you have a pet, try to take them with you if you can. And sometimes a friend is down for a little weekend jaunt somewhere, you never know. But solo traveling, I have loved. My mom really ingrained that to me as a kid. And I really love it. It's so much fun. And I really enjoy 
my time alone. I never need to be with people. People just add to my life. People aren't my entire life. And I think a lot of people need other people around them. And I think it's really important to have that relationship with yourself and like be comfortable with yourself and enjoy your time solo. My advice is just to go out there and do it. If people don't want to do something with you, go out to a restaurant alone. Who cares? Go get ice cream alone. Go to the beach alone. I don't know. Go to the county fair alone. Who cares? No, Literally nobody cares. Nobody is sitting around you thinking, oh my God, they're alone. They're a loser. No. Girl, nobody cares. Everybody is like this glued to their phone or, you know, busy talking with somebody. They do not care, I promise. And they're not thinking about you. Do you script your videos or are they completely candid? I really love your videos and you are such an inspiration to me. Well, first of all, thank you. No, nothing is scripted. I mean, I do like when I'm doing my home reno videos, sometimes I have like a production in my head, like, okay, we're gonna shoot this, we're gonna shoot this, I wanna show this, I wanna show this, but no, it's just me, it's just the camera. I don't have a production team, I don't have a lighting team, I don't have a sound team, I don't have an assistant. It's just May vibes, for better or for worse. I don't really like vlogging in public that much, but however, I am getting more comfortable as you and I connect more in the vlogs. I know you guys have been really liking them recently, but um, no, nothing is scripted. It's 100% me, but it's definitely a version of me. Like, I don't give all of me, because I'm definitely a bit more unwell, but I try to reel it in a little bit. Sometimes it's difficult. Like I like when I'm being filmed versus like having the camera like this. You know what I mean? Like I'm good on a set. I like the energy of people around, but yeah. Thanks for the comment. Okay, before we continue on with the video, I wanna to thank today's video sponsor, which is Helix Sleep. If you guys haven't heard about Helix Sleep, which I'm sure you have because I have been sleeping on them for three years. My mom has a bed, my ex has a bed, my friends have a bed, so many of you guys have ordered from Helix as well. Helix offers premium mattresses that are customized for your specifications. All you have to do is take the little Helix Sleep quiz and it shows up right at your door. Free shipping in the US and a 100 night sleep guarantee. There's even a 10 year warranty flexible payment plans and financing options are available. So a good night's sleep is not that far away. Okay, so now to the fun part. I hit up Helix and I'm like, you guys, I need a mattress for my friend, Mark. Mark is a really good friend of mine. He's an artist. He works really hard, works a lot of long days, but his mattress was, it just was not the vibe. So I kind of knew what Mark was going for. I knew his height. I knew his weight. I knew what kind of sleeper he is. So I actually took the sleep quiz for Mark and now we're going to go over and surprise him and I'll show you guys exactly how easy it is to install your Helix mattress. Okay, as you can see, that was so easy to put together. If I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. And Mark is gonna be so excited to have a brand new mattress. Actually, I think he just got back from work. Let me text him and uh, see how surprised he is. But, uh would you look at that? Mark loves his mattress, I love his mattress, and I know that you guys will also love your Helix Sleep mattresses. So if you guys are interested, you can go to helixsleep.com slash Prada for 20% off your entire order site-wide. It will be linked down below. You get the free shipping, you get the free pillows, you get the 100 night sleep guarantee. There's nothing to lose. How do I tell my emotionally abusive and controlling mom I'm moving to live with my partner? She's difficult. This is hard. Uh, for somebody who moved out very young in life, I moved out when I was turning 17. I came out as gay and was not accepted by my father. And I lived with my brother for the summer and then I went to college and then I never went back home since. So I've been completely financially independent since around 16, 17 years old. This is difficult because I've never allowed myself to be in a situation where I feel uncomfortable, where I am dependent on family. However, I think that's because I was really young when I did it and I made a very brash decision. I wasn't thinking of the repercussions and the pain and how hard it would be. It's okay if you are in a position where you're having to deal with stuff and sometimes you need to make the smart decision to like kind of deal with it for a little bit. But if you are able to get out and depend solely on yourself and not need that support system, I didn't have a support system. I still don't really have a support system. I'm close with my mom and one of my brothers, but there's a big age difference there. And I, I, I just haven't been home. I've been on my own since I was a kid. So I've been lucky enough to make the decision decisions to live completely for myself and on my own without needing family ever. But like I said, that's not everybody's situation. So honestly, if it were me, I would probably move all my stuff out already while the parent is at work, clear it out and leave with a letter 
just because some people get very combative when you bring a subject onto them and just, you know, pour your heart out in a letter and that's something that they can reread and think about and you just also never know how somebody's gonna react. You don't wanna put yourself in a situation where, you know, you're not safe. But that's just what I would do. I wouldn't want to be like, hey, you're abusive, I'm moving out, and then for things to escalate. But yeah, that's just my advice. But I wish you the best and don't blame yourself. This is all on them and you're gonna be fine, I promise. My boss was having an affair with a 23 year old. Do I tell his wife who is also my boss or stay out of it? Honey, stay out of it. I've worked many jobs. I've had many different lives and I would never get involved in drama that can affect my paycheck. You need to worry about yourself, worry about your bag. That is their problem and you are not included in it. So just stay out of it. What era of your life are you in? Slut, self-care, travel. Um, I am in my vibrational reset era. I'm not seeing a lot of people. I don't have a lot of energy to output and I want to only receive calm vibes, chill vibes, because I am healing and growing and nurturing myself. I've spoke to my friends about this. Guys, for the next month, I'm kind of just vibing. I'm kind of just doing my thing. I don't want to go out. I'm not drinking. I'm not partying. I want to do like good organic moments. We're going to the farmer's market. I'm going to the beach. I'm going for a walk. I'm going for a hike. I'm not going to the club. I'm not going out to fancy dinners. I'm not going shopping. That's all fine, but I'm taking a little reset right now. That's my era. That's my healing era. What are your favorite heat tolerant flowers for your garden? It's so hot in Cali. I never plant in the summer. I would highly recommend not planting in the summer. It gets so hot. However, herbs are wonderful. Oregano, rosemary, basil, depending on where you're planting it. I love lavender. I love any salvia variety. There's a lot of different varieties of salvia. Shasta daisies. What else do I like? Olive trees, little mini olive shrubs. Yeah, those are just a few. Just go to a landscaping store and whatever is in the direct sun usually will be fine. All right, we have to change angles real quick. When's the book coming out? <laughs> What book? I have no idea what book you're talking about. There's been no announcement. But I am going to Italy for a few months to work on something, so. We'll talk about that later. What do you think about hooking up with your ex-partner after the breakup? <sighs> this is a loaded question. I think if you are able to handle the emotions, go for it. Get off. Do what you need to do. Live the fantasy, sister. For me, God, I was in such a such a weird situation because I hadn't dated anyone in seven years. So it was very comfortable for me to hook up with my ex and I really enjoyed doing so. And we did for a long time. We still are occasionally. But now, within the past six months to a year, I've been able to compartmentalize the relationship. So again, this does not work for everybody. The gay community, gays are very different from straight people. That's not necessarily true, but everybody's different. For me, I am a very sexual person. I'm very sensual, I'm very romantic, but I also don't like random hookups. Like I would rather connect with somebody and have that chemistry and then see where that goes than to just randomly get on an app and just hook up with somebody. You know, no tea, no shade, no pink lemonade, it's just not for everybody. But I think I love in a very, on the spectrum of like male and female, like I think I'm in the middle, but I love more feminine. Like I need the chemistry, I need the romance. I need you to write me letters, postcards. I need words of affirmation. I need the foreplay. I need, I just need romance. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a dick in your face, but that's not gonna do it for me every time. You know what I mean? So if it works for you, that's great. You have to like reach within your soul and figure out if it actually works for you. Are you hurting your Yourself? Are you over this person? Do you want them back? Just like be open and honest and communicate and definitely talk to your therapist about it because I think it could work for some people, but it doesn't work for everybody. I know for me, it, it wasn't working in the beginning and then it got better because I was like, oh, it's all good. This isn't going anywhere. I feel good. It's fine to happen occasionally, but definitely not all the time. I'm super sensitive too, so I don't know. You just gotta feel the feels, sister. And sometimes you have to go through the pain and sometimes you have to go through that craziness to get to the other side, so. Is it difficult being friends with an ex? How to detach romantic feelings in a friendship? 
You can take away what I said from the previous question. I think it is difficult, it's difficult for me, especially if you're going and hanging out to a place or a home that you lived in before or a place that you shared together. I think it's difficult because you will always see parts of your old life. You just have to be really in tune with yourself and know yourself in order to have a friendship. I have a friendship with all of my exes to an extent. I have one ex who's getting married this month, my ex from college. I have another ex who has a long-term partner, a boyfriend, and I have my more recent ex who lives in Los Angeles, but I'm not really close friends with them. I am definitely friends, like if they ever need anything, I'd be there in a second. I have my ex who's getting married this month, I'm sending him a wedding gift, you know, like we'll check in occasionally. All my relationships ended up amicably, and there was a lot of love there, so why would I want to change that? I'm always gonna be attached to them in some capacity, but the relationship just changed. So you just have to see what works for you and figure it out. But to detach romantic feelings is very difficult for me. However, what really helped me was kind of putting that relationship in a box and saying, these are the reasons why it didn't work, and this is what I want moving forward that this person can't give me or isn't able to give me, and it's not going anywhere. So I think that mentality really helped me like move on and be okay with having an ex in my life in some capacity. Last time you had sex. When was the last time you had sex? <sighs> come here, come here, come closer, come closer, come on, come closer. That's not of your damn business. No, I'm kidding. I actually don't remember the last time I had actual sex. Maybe three months ago? I'm not a super promiscuous person. No, that's a, that's a lie. Yeah, I just don't have, I don't have actual sex with random people. You know, I need to really, really like you and I need to really vibe with you and I need to be really connected with you. But it's been a minute, it's been a minute. I'm in my um, celibacy era right now. What are your thoughts on taking a break from a relationship? Is it valid or is it break, or is breaking up the real resolution? I think a break in a relationship only works when you both know the place that you want to end up in. You know, what this person needs to work on and what this person needs to work on. And then you separate, you work on those things and you come back. You need a timeline, you need to be in therapy separately and together, I think. And you need to take that time and work on yourself. A break is not like meant for, you know, just going and sleeping with a bunch of people and then saying like, okay, I'm fulfilled now, let's get back together. I think there's so much more than that. Otherwise, if you're not doing that work, then you might as well just break up because what's the point? That did not work in my last relationship, so that's why we just broke up. <laughs> oh! Okay, next question. So what do you do when you want to hug and love on your partner more, but they're but not sure how to ask? I'm a very affectionate person and my boyfriend is not used to that and I don't want to feel annoying or clingy. What should I do? This is a very interesting question. It's not something that I've really ever heard before because I love public affection. However, I did go on a date with a guy maybe last summer that didn't like any sort of PDA, didn't like to hug, didn't like to hold hands, didn't like to really like walk like and nuzzle each other and I thought that was really odd. However, I never communicated that these things are important to me. So I really think that you should just have an honest and candid conversation be like, hey, like I know that your love language is not personal touch, but mine is. Is there a way that we can, you know, try to be a little more cuddly, a little more affectionate, you know? I like feeling close to you and I like that, you know, that personal touch and that personal contact. And I think, you know, if you just say like how much it means to you, that's not weird at all. That's normal, that's your love language. You could also take the love language quiz online and maybe he could take it and you guys can see what your love languages are. I'll link that down below in the description. But I think if you both take it and you see like, oh, this is yours, this is yours, this makes so much sense. Maybe that's how you approach it, you know? And if you don't wanna be so head on, you could always take it that way. Be like, oh, do you wanna take this quiz? I'm curious what your love languages are. So I like this guy and I don't, know how to ask him out, help. Okay, so I said this before, just ask if he wants to do something. Just be like, hey, do you wanna go see the Barbie movie and get ice cream after? Or, hey, there's this concert in town, like, do you like them? Would you, want, would you ever wanna be down to go to a concert together? Keep it cute or put it on mute. Nobody wants anything crazy. Be like, hey, I really like you, I wanna get dinner with you. Some people just don't connect with that. I know I don't, 
I mean, I will go on a date if somebody asks me out like that, but I like an activity and I feel like it just takes a lot of the social pressure off from like calling it a big like, you know, situation kind of date. How do you know when you're ready to date and try to put yourself out there? You never are ready. At least I'm not. I mean, I'm also somebody who doesn't really connect really well on apps. I mean, attention is nice, but for me, I need a connection in real life. I need the chemistry. I need a romantic movie kind of moment. And they're out there, but you just need to take your eyes off your phone and look up sometimes. Cause it, it's happening all around. It happens to me very, very often where I'll meet somebody just randomly on the street or at a dog park or at a cafe, or I just bump into somebody and it becomes a moment. A couple weeks ago, I was at this really cute sandwich shop and I saw this guy and we like connected eyes. He was walking in, I was walking out and I sat outside to eat my sandwich with some friends. And then he came out and was waiting. We like locked eyes a few more times. And then I went back to my car with my friends. I scribbled my name and number on a piece of paper. I came back and I gave it to him and I said, we should go out sometime. And now we have a date coming up in like a week. I feel like people are never ready. And I think that holds a lot of people back. So just go for it. Put yourself out there. Who knows what's going to happen. If you don't put yourself out there, nobody's going to come beating at your door. You're not going to meet anybody. Just be open to the possibilities. Do you find yourself looking for somebody similar to your ex? Looks, age, personality, etc. Or trying harder to find someone with opposite traits slash looks slash habits as your ex? Um, no, I have a very, very eclectic taste in people. I'm open to anything. I'm open to older. I'm not really open to younger. Under 29, under 30, like I'm really only dating 30 plus, preferably 35 to 45 because I feel like that's where my brain is. That's where my maturity level is sometimes. Of course I have my immature moments, but I'm not trying to date somebody who's 21 or 23. First of all, I am not attracted to boys. I'm attracted to men and people have their sh together and know who they are. And sometimes I'll get surprised and I'll meet somebody. Like I met somebody on a hike in Montana the other day. He was gorgeous, 6'4", full beard. We went on a date, he was 23 years old. But in that moment, I'm like, you're at least 34. There's no way. It was crazy. Very well educated, but had nothing in common. Like it was crazy. And it was just like, we had nothing to talk about. It was so like, I was like, it was very hard for me. It was a hard date. So I kind of stay away from anything under 29, really anything under 30, because there's not a lot in common, you know? Like I don't have my shit together fully, but I also like know who I am. And I think people in that 21 to 25 is like a, a slippery, dangerous slope that I'm not trying to be involved in. But no, I'm open to anything. I'm, I'm really drawn to wit and charm and funny and people who are active and like to travel and like to cook and be outdoors. So, you know, I'm here to get surprised, but no, I, I don't go for one type. I think I used to be when I was in college and like in my early twenties, but now I'm open to anything, anyone. It's just like, if you make me laugh, if you bring something to my life that is not already in it, I can't be the one who's bringing all the funny and all the charm and all the handsome. You know what I mean? People need to elevate you and bring something and make your life better. You can't just be bringing all the cards to the table for them to enjoy. Feel me? How to get them to like you back. Honey, you should never need to get somebody to like you back. They should be obsessed with you. They should want to be seeing you. They should want to be texting you. They should be hitting you up at all hours of the day, except two in the morning. Those are okay sometimes, but not all the time. However, there is a little advice I can give you. Don't be available all the time. And I know people consider this playing a game, but it's just common sense at this point. If somebody is knocking at your door constantly and wanting to hang out constantly, don't make yourself available all the time. Don't respond immediately. Just give it a little bit. Like we even wait like 10 minutes. Like that's my personality. I want a little bit of chase, but I also don't want to feel like you're always turning me down. Don't make everybody your entire life right away. You have a life, you have things to do, you have people to see, you have, you gotta go be gorgeous and show the world and give them the time of day when you can afford to. But I promise anybody who likes you, anybody who's emotionally available, readily available to go on dates, will be hitting you up. Do you find it hard dating where you live and your line of work? As in everyone is quote unquote, the same stereotypical California. I'm from South Georgia and you seem so grounded and knowledgeable that the California typical would bore you. Not sure if this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense. And absolutely, the California typical person is somebody who's probably only been here for one to three years. I've been here for nine, which is crazy. And I've also been on my own for a long time 
time. So I've been able to experience all the fun and everything. Like when I was 18, 19, I was clubbing in New York with Adam Lambert. I was, you know, an intern at Condé Nast Publications. I've worked for so many cool companies. I've traveled. I've been so broke that I was stranded once in St. Bart's and didn't have money to leave and was sleeping on a beach. Like I have lived many different lives. I've done many different things. And I think I'm very attracted to people who know themselves and have interests and goals and live life to the fullest. And a lot of people come here for fame or wanting to be an influencer or wanting to be in the scene. And I was lucky enough to have a start before being an influencer and being a YouTuber, or Instagram or whatever paid. I was doing it just for fun. So I was able to enter this world, A, with my education, B, with experiences, and C, just doing it because I enjoyed doing it. I was, the goal was never to be famous and I don't consider myself famous now, but I think it also just comes down to people not knowing who they are, you know? And I just don't attract that kind of vibe. So I don't really have the problem, but I think a lot of cities have the same issues. The people are the same. It's just who you decide to give your energy to. You know, people are the same in every city, whether you're in Southern Georgia, New York, Boston, LA, London, there are so many different people and you're gonna connect with people that align with you and the rest are gonna kinda fall to the wayside. So yeah, I wouldn't say I have issues dating. I am very selective and I just don't really subscribe to that type of personality. It's totally fine, but it's just not my vibe. I'm more outside, I like to travel, I like to do different things. I'm not in the clubs all the time. I'm not like, you know, obsessed with going out or drinking or anything. So where you spend your time is where you're gonna meet people that you enjoy. And if you're not meeting people, go and do it yourself. Go and enjoy your life and go on the adventures by yourself. You don't always need people to do it with. But that is it for today's episode of Can We Talk? Let me know. I'm sure that this series is gonna be ever changing with different setups, different questions. The goal is for one day that this will be a podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys interact with this. Like this video, leave a comment, share it with a friend, and DM me on Instagram. Any questions you have, I'll pick from my DMs as well. I'll pick from the comments for next Monday's episode, but I'm I'm excited to just sit down and talk to you guys and do like kind of like a long form Q&A advice talk show podcast type of vibe. Like I said, it's been a dream to have a podcast. You know, I've had a couple offers, but it just hasn't been the right fit. So why not do a little soft launch here and see where it goes? Okay, that's it for today's video. I love you guys so much. Make sure to leave things better than how you found them. I love you and I will see you next time. Bye.